Grace Church, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's rejoice and be glad in His presence and in His Word. We are in 1 and 2 Thessalonians once again. We went through 1 Thessalonians, beloved. How the beloved of God in Christ become more and more beloved to one another in light of the return of Christ and for fruitful witness to the ends of the earth. 2 Thessalonians was steadfast. Be steadfast in Christ in the midst of the problems and the persecutions of life. And now we're in a three-week mini-series, I guess you'd call it, an addendum to First and Second Thessalonians entitled uh, Beloved and Steadfast. And on Sunday, I just want to review what we looked at on Sunday. On Sunday, we just kind of did a, a bit of an overview, but we really were, were focused a lot in First Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, lessons for the church, lessons for the church. And this is true about the church, about leadership, and about your life uh, if you're a believer. It's this, uh, the very first thing, it, you need to be saved, okay? It's very clear that this is written to those who are regenerated by the Holy Spirit, those who are loved by God and chosen to belong to Him, and how He drew you to Himself in His perfect time. You came to faith in Christ because of God's doing, as 1 Corinthians 1 says, by His doing, you are in Christ Jesus. Jesus saves, Jesus sanctifies by His Spirit, through the Word, and so the first and foremost thing, a lesson to the church is, are you regenerate? Are you a believer? If you're a part of Grace Church of Orange, but you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus, you know that you hear the gospel uh, from me and the other leaders and from many of the people at Grace a lot. And it could be that you've gotten a bit jaded to that or, or hardened to that or calloused to that. And I would say your soul is at stake. You need to believe in Jesus Christ crucified, he shed his blood in our place as our substitute, took the penalty our sins deserved, buried, risen from the dead, and is soon to return, the imminent return of Christ for all those who are his. And I hope that you are his. But what other lessons from the, for the church did we find as we looked really at these two letters, but specifically as we get into the first chapter of the first letter? It's quite simple, and it just jumps out at you. The first is they received the Word of God. These believers received the Word of God as the Word of God, the Word of God that is from God, sourced by God, sustained by God, used to save and sanctify. So they were receptor of the Word of God, very receptive. They, they believed it. They received it. Secondly, we saw their testimony. They were, they were imitators, and they were examples. They were imitators of good Christian examples, and then they became good Christian examples to others. And that's a lesson to the church. We want to strive to emulate those who have gone before us. As Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But also, that we would never be puffed up, but always very humble about it, but that, that would that our lives would be exhibits to the value of knowing Christ. Be examples to others. So saved, regenerate, and then receptive of the word, imitators and examples. Thirdly, loving and receiving leaders. Uh, the thing that is very clear in First and Second Thessalonians is that their leaders were writing to them and they were receiving what was being said. In fact, at one point in Second Thessalonians, Paul says, if anyone does not receive and does not listen to what we're saying, take note of that person and have nothing to do with them. What he's saying is in the majority, uh, there was a disobedient minority, but in the majority, they were loving and receiving of their leaders. They were, as Hebrews 13, 17 says, um, letting their leaders serve with joy and not with groaning. And then just the last thing we looked at is that they were inspired by and they inspired other churches and Chris, other Christians to love and good deeds. Like they, they learned from others. They were imitators. They were examples. But it, it spurred them on to love and good deeds. They, they were fruitful as a church. They were... They were, you know, reaching uh, the, the places that God was putting them in. In fact, you know, one of the things Paul said is, you know, you suffered at the hands of your countrymen just as others did. They were suffering for, for, the, for the name of Christ, and they were inspired by suffering. They were inspired by other Christians um, trusting Christ in the middle of, a, of the problems and persecutions of life. And so these are the lessons the church can learn, and there are many more. These are the ones that I think, you know, just jumped out at me that this is for the saved, this is for the regenerate, uh, to be receptive of the Word of God, to be imitators and examples, to love and receive your leaders, and then 
be inspired by and inspire other churches and Christians to love and good deeds. Uh, the world is bigger than Grace Church of Orange. Uh, the world goes to the ends of the earth. Uh, to some people, we are the ends of the earth. But where we, where we are, uh, there are so many other good churches and, and believers that we can learn from and be inspired by and inspire one another uh, to love and good deeds in the name of Christ uh, for his glory and others' good.